Hey there, I'm Lee Ullman here with some big news from the National Young Farmers Coalition. We're partnering with Heritage Radio Network on a special season of The Farm Report. It's all about what's happening with the Farm Bill and how it impacts farmers and eaters. I am growing diversified vegetables on land that's been in our family for 150 years. And so with the pandemic, gentrification, property values going up, we had to sell the land and we lost it. Join us as we uncover the untold stories behind this massive piece of legislation that shapes how we grow our food, what we eat, and so much more. The problems we have had, those are things that come from earlier Farm Bill and USDA policy, right? Like Earl Butts, get big or get out. You know, it's my responsibility to know not only what I'm eating, but then like how, how that all came to be and realize like, wow, like this piece of legislation, all this money, like it's technically something that I support as a taxpayer. While Congress debates the next Farm Bill, this is not just an invitation to listen. It's a call to action. Be part of the conversation. Subscribe to the Farm Report on Heritage Radio Network wherever you listen to podcasts. Enjoy food the way nature intended. Alaska Seafood, wild, natural, and sustainable. For more information, visit wildalaskaseafood.com. Hey, this is Kat, Communications Director of HRN, here with a preview of Episode 2 of Meat and 3. This week, we're talking pork. We'll learn the best way to make a BLT. I don't think I've ever successfully made a BLT just because I eat the bacon before any other part. How pitmasters and restaurateurs are helping put small-scale pig farmers back to work in Alabama. It's all about money. That's the bottom line. What pork has to do with economics? Farmers could be particularly affected by China's threat to levy its own tariffs on pork and soybeans. And with government. Basically all of politics is pork at this point. So tune in on Friday afternoon for your weekly serving of Meat in 3. And make sure you subscribe to be the first to know when new episodes air. Hey, hey, you're listening to Eat Your Words on Heritage Radio Network, and I'm your host, Kathy Irway. So it's summer, and I hope everyone's planning some fun travels. Um, if you can't get away that far, um, I hope that you get your hands on a wonderful book that is a virtual journey to a, a place that I've never been. So I'm really excited to talk about that. It's called The Alaska from Scratch Cookbook, Seasonal, Scenic, Homemade. And I'm joined by its author all the, from all the way from Alaska who could join us here today. It's Maya Wilson. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming down from the great state of Alaska. <laughs> for... Yes, it's great to be in New York. Yeah. Well, this book is um, it just came out, you know, in February. But um, you've been blogging about, you know, Alaskan culture and food that you make from scratch <laughs> with your blog, Alaska from Scratch, since 2011 or That's so? That's right. Yeah. Yes. yes. So you're like the food blog from Alaska, pretty much. Yes, that, <laughs> okay. that does tend to be the case. <laughs> yeah. But um, tell us a little bit, I know that you're a transplant, so you moved there from California where you grew up. Yes. And um, what was that transition like? Well, it, California to Alaska is just, it's worlds apart. And so the you move up and from a place where there's a very kind of, fast pace of life in California and you have smog and traffic and um but you have a lot of produce and a lot year of round, yeah. year round produce and sunshine and things like that. And you move up to Alaska and it's remote and it's cold and you don't have access to the same sorts of, you know, fruit and vegetables, for example, or ingredients. And if you do, they're really expensive. And mm. so uh, you, moving up there and there's that sense of scarcity and mm -hmm. that sense of, you know, you have to kind of be creative and live mm -hmm. off the land. And, and all those things were culture shock for sure, because mm -hmm. 
I used to have a Starbucks on every corner and, you know, you go through the drive through yeah. and then you move to Alaska and that's not an option. And so you really, it really changes you and it helps you reprioritize, I think. Yeah. And it helps you become more resourceful and creative, it yes. seems. I know, I, I can imagine like how weird it must seem, even for me, like buying a little pint of like raspberries in the winter in New York, mm-hmm. when I know I'm like, okay, it seems like just frivolous, you know? Like it came from so far, but for you, yeah. that's it. Just like multiplies that feeling. I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> just, even though it's not as far, but anyway, um, I, I understand because it's like it's the the culture of food is so different. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay, so for me, when I think of Alaska food, I think of wild Alaskan salmon. That's like one of the most popular, I guess, yes. culinary exports from the, the from Alaska. But uh, mm-hmm. what else is like a signature food or ingredient? Well, we have tons of Alaska seafood um, mm-hmm. beyond salmon. salmon. Sure, you know halibut. We have razor clams. Got it. We have oysters. We have um, cod and black cod and sablefish, and we have some absolutely incredible Alaska seafood. Beyond that, we have things like reindeer sausage and uh-huh. birch syrup, which is Ooh. like if like tapping a maple tree, you tap mm-hmm. a birch tree, and it makes a really nice syrup that's kind of kind of like sorghum mm. a, a little less sweet than maple okay uh, it's really lovely and does it taste like birch beer uh kind of <laughs> yeah yeah, okay. yeah i know that <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah and you can use you can use it in cocktails you can use it like to glaze salmon you can wow. use it in desserts so mm. it's really versatile and uh, you know we have spruce so spruce mm. tips you know, you use that as a There's botanical. A, like, or... lemony and sour, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. a little little piney maybe. But um, Do you forage that this you, time of year? Uh, yes, you can forage that. Mm-hmm. And we also forage wild mushrooms. We get mm-hmm. wild berries. Mm-hmm. And w- rhubarb grows like a weed in Alaska mm-hmm. in the summertime because we have all that sunlight. So we have a lot of great ingredients and a lot of really fun things to play with you just need to know the time of year to get it right how to get it and preserve it yes yeah yes which you demonstrate throughout your blog and in this wonderful cookbook which is such a I I, I was just saying you know you know before when we're off air it is really like <clears throat> it is a well put together beautiful scenic journey really I mean I love that you start out with the mornings you write Alaska mornings are the best mornings Mm -hmm. (laughs) the air is always crisp scented with the day's newness the changing seasons and Alaska's unrelenting landscape um it's you know there's deer or reindeer is that a reindeer in this picture (laughs) that's a caribou oh okay sorry (laughs) (laughs) I love it it's fascinating yeah that's a caribou and then um if they're domestic, it's a reindeer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Maya, you also like sprinkle your introduction with lots of tidbits about some of the culture shock things that you mm-hmm. confronted. Um, I was curious about, you know, a couple times you mentioned, you know, here, you know, we're not that fancy. And you say, for in one instance, you say that there's a lot of broken windshields or a lot of broken windows in Alaska. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's very common for all the cars you see driving on the road to have completely obliterated windshields, really? just shattered and and lots of chips on them. And that has to do with, one, the, the kind of freezing temperatures that we get and the kind of drastic changes in temperature that we get, but also, you know, a lot of driving on dirt roads and Hmm. rocks getting kicked up by semi-trucks and things like that. And so it's very, very common to have broken windshields. Okay. I was trying to figure that one out. I was like, (laughs) I hope they didn't hit a caribou or something. No, but, you know, moose. Moose are a big uh, road hazard where we live down on the Kenai Peninsula. So definitely there's, there's a big sign on the highway that says how many moose have been killed on the road this oh, year no. yeah oh, so gosh. it's definitely a road hazard for sure oh my goodness are they um are they also wild game that people hunt these days the moose yes yeah, yeah. yeah. there's hunting season for moose in the fall and so that's not something you dabble in though yeah no i'm <laughs> okay. not a hunter i like i like to stay in the kitchen so mm-hmm. <laughs> if someone wants to bring me salmon or bring me some moose uh, that's awesome and i'll cook it up and we'll enjoy it Well, let's talk about reindeer for a second, because that's an exotic ingredient to me. So you have a reindeer um, sausage breakfast dish. Um, Sorry, I just lost my place right here. Um, A beautiful 
Uh, it's a two potato hash with reindeer sausage. There we go. Alaska yeah. morning. Orange scented French toast stuffed with Nutella, two potato hash with reindeer sausage. Mm -hmm. So you don't make this sausage, or do you, Um, from scratch? No, I don't make the sausage Mm -hmm. from scratch. That's a a popular Alaska ingredient that we have available Mm -hmm. to us. And so, uh, yeah, reindeer, because it's domesticated, you can purchase it in the store. It's like beef. Right. Right. But if people Mm -hmm. hunt caribou, Mm -hmm. then they can make their own sausage from that. Um, you also have bison factors mm-hmm. into the cook the ingredient or the recipes here. Yes, bison is a great kind of um, underappreciated Alaska game meat, and mm-hmm. bison is so lean and it makes terrific steak. It makes a beautiful burger, and we have a lot of bison. And you have a wonderful bison and smoked porter pie with mm-hmm. mushrooms. It's like a wonderful little pot pie. Yes, and it gets nice and tender, and it's. Mm. Yeah, I love the smoke porter in there, a little hint of like smokiness and bitterness in there. So it's like a little bit different, but not too unfamiliar than um, a lot of the meats we're familiar with. And that's what I try to do all throughout the book is to offer substitutions for people who don't have access to reindeer or bison to say, hey, you know, you can use a great hardwood smoked sausage for this, a chicken sausage or turkey sausage, or you can use, you know, you can use beef in Mm -hmm. place of bison and so that when people pick up the book they can still make the stuff at home Mm -hmm. even if they don't live in Alaska so beyond these um, singular ingredients to Alaska or common to Alaska what is Alaskan cuisine to you hmm I think Alaska cuisine is all about being resourceful Mm -hmm. and creative and you have to cook out of necessity but it's also about survival in Mm -hmm. terms of you know you get through a long hard dark winter by feeding each other and taking care of each other and so and that's what food has always been for me even before I moved to Alaska Mm -hmm. you know has been about nourishment and -hmm. taking care of those around me and that just has translated across and when I moved up to Alaska it really resonated with me the way that that food becomes that thing that helps us survive Mm -hmm. the, Mm -hmm. the cold and the dark and the scarcity. And it's, it comes into bigger focus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That feeling of need. Um, let's talk a lot more about some of these delicious recipes right after a quick little commercial break. about what it takes to swim a coastline longer than the entire eastern seaboard and leap tall waterfalls in a single bound? What does it take to survive 200 feet deep in icy salt water? What would you be made of? Wild Alaska seafood is made of tight muscle mass, long chain omega-3s, and incredible micronutrients. It matters where your food comes from. Experience the flavor of the fittest in every bite and enjoy food the way nature intended. Alaska seafood, wild, natural, and sustainable. Ask for Alaska on the menu, grocery store, or smart device. For more information, visit wildalaskaseafood.com. All right, we're back chatting more with Maya Wilson. She's the author of the Alaska from Scratch cookbook. Also check out her blog, Alaska from Scratch. Um, But your first book is uh, a wonderful journey, as we were talking about, um, of somewhat familiar but slightly different recipes. And uh, looking at the seafood chapter, I think you have a lot of creativity here. Mm, Thank you. Um, There's, like, all sorts of different cultures here and cuisines, like the... You know, poached halibut and Thai coconut curry. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there's like seared halibut pasta with pistachio pesto and so forth. Um, It's it's really a fun smorgasbord, board, if you will. (laughs) It's all over the place. Um, Where where do you get your like culinary sort of inspiration? Or are you a trained chef, or are you just a 
home taught chef or that's a great question what, yeah, yeah. I, it going. yeah I grew up um when my grandma got me in the kitchen at a young age and it kind of became my safe space and my play space and I loved being in the kitchen but we didn't have a lot of money and we didn't have a lot of food and but I had this passion for food and so I would kind of cook things out of necessity I would eat, you know, mayonnaise sandwich on white bread, or mm. I would, you know, just play around with it, yeah. play around with what food we did have. And then I started watching cooking shows on TV and reading cookbooks as uh-huh. I got older and yeah. really kind of absorbing all that, even though I didn't have the food to make at home uh-huh. to, to try it, <laughs> you know, but I would try to elevate a jar of pasta sauce mm-hmm. and make it something better than it was or really just playing with food and experimenting with flavors and it was really when I got to Alaska and had to cook more from scratch because we lived out in the middle of nowhere and because we didn't have access to ingredients so I started making more and more things from scratch at home and that's when I really became a food writer and really Mm -hmm. kind of that grew from there right and from there I started a weekly food column in Uh the newspaper and now I have a cookbook. And so, but the, the seafood chapter of the book is my pride and joy. It's right in the middle of the book and it's the longest chapter in the book. And it's because we have so much beautiful seafood Mm -hmm. and you don't have to substitute mayonnaise for seafood. Exactly. (laughs) Um, Right. No, I love the, I love the uh, diversity of the ingredients here and the playfulness that you, that you present. And it sounds like you really like, sort of like honed in on that childhood knack for making the most out of molehills, if you will, <laughs> when it comes to food. Yeah, and um, I, was, I was born in Hawaii and I grew up in California, so I bring some of those sensibilities to the Alaska ingredients. And I try mm-hmm. to bring some freshness and some brightness and color and acid and, mm-hmm. and some heat. And so all those things kind of play into the food that the, I the make today. The lettuce wraps here, the blackened yes. salmon lettuce wraps, that is. Um, and a hoisin salmon burger. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are some, what, I mean, if there are, uh, typical Alaskan dishes, mm. like, is, is there any that you could, uh, recall or mention? Smoked salmon is probably our like most Biggest, well-known yeah. flavor, but we have our smoked salmon that we have is quite a bit different than what you have here in New York, like lox, mm-hmm. which is more cured. We have kind of more of a hot smoke and it's, it's drier and it's not as moist. And, but it's also great on bagels, mm-hmm. you know, the way that you like to enjoy them here with, you know, red onions and capers. And I feel kind like of there's things. a lot of more spices involved too with the Alaskan smoked salmon. Like yeah. There's a lot of cracked peppercorns and all sorts of stuff, right? Right. Yeah. Definitely. And, or you'll get a sweeter version that has, you know, some, some brown sugar or some molasses or things like that. But smoked salmon is probably mm-hmm. our, our big claim to fame in terms of because that's we get all that salmon in the summer and we have to keep it through the winter yeah. and so we you know we smoke it salmon. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like this wonderful smoked salmon pot pie with chai of drop biscuits is that your creation or is that yes. like an alaskan thing no that's i know your... that okay i developed that i had awesome. I, you know everyone loves a pot pie in the winter mm-hmm. and we have you know smoked salmon in abundance and so I developed that and it's been a really popular one especially among the Alaska folks. So for folks who don't live um, right around an Alaskan Mm -hmm. salmon fishery or seafood fishery what should people look out for when it comes to shopping for seafood and um, you know wild Alaskan is comparatively more expensive but uh, is that is it better in your opinion? (laughs) Yes (laughs) it's it's much, much better, especially yeah. than farmed. Um, and you want, you want to ask for Alaska. You want to see the, you want to see it say that it's Alaska seafood. Where and in, in like, they're just the labels in the seafood market. Yes. But okay. you can also ask and you can talk to the fishmonger and say, Hey, I, I would like some Alaska salmon Got it. Okay. and you can get sockeye or, or a king salmon. And it's, so beautiful and healthy and fresh and it the flavor is just incomparable 
to anything else. It's Alaska seafood is my favorite ingredient to work with. And that's why it gets such a big feature in my book. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a huge pride in the seafood industry up in Alaska because it's one of the most well-maintained fisheries in terms of sustainability. Yes. So that's a big part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fishermen, we, you know, in Alaska, all the fishermen know each other. We know where this fish is coming from. We know who pulled it up out of the water. We know who processed it. We and it's it's kind of one big family affair up there in really terms cool. of in terms of how the salmon you know sustains our community and but it's a sustainable resource too and we we work very hard to take good care of it. Yeah. Um, other wild Alaskan seafood ingredients that includes. I mean, there's so many. There's the we didn't talk about the king crab. Mm. That's a huge specialty. Yes. King crab avocado toast I have in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, scallops. Scallops are one of my absolute favorite seafood. Big scallops, right? Yes, the, the huge, diver. yes, mm-hmm. the huge um, weather vane, you know, scallops. They're absolutely stunning. And halibut is another huge one. I have the halibut capital of the world, right? Oh. Not far from where we live, and so halibut's a big one that we see that too like often. to keep. Yeah. Right, and that's wild caught too. Yes, yeah, yeah. So Alaska halibut is incredible, I and I didn't realize there was oysters too coming from Alaska. Oh my goodness! Yes, I used to work at a bistro where we had oysters, and I used to shuck dozens and dozens of oysters every night mm. at the bistro, and um, so yeah, those are very popular. <laughs> Very, very popular. Yeah. Yeah. There's all all sorts of varieties, right? You mm-hmm. can geek out about. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful oysters. Um, so I guess uh, we touched on your favorite section from the book, um, but is there a favorite recipe right now that you're just like really digging at the moment? You know, I really, one of my favorite ones in there is the salmon burger with sesame slaw and wasabi mayo. Got it. I could eat that once a week <laughs> and be happy for the rest of my life. And I, I don't like to repeat too many recipes, but that one is one that is, you know, when we have uh, guests come in from out of town and I want to showcase salmon in a way that's approachable, mm-hmm. a burger mm. often, I mean, kids I love it. And, and so it's a d- really delicious recipe. And healthy too. It seems like you have the slaw, you got like, you know, yeah. a bit of everything. It's way better. For you than a normal burger. <laughs> yes, and you get your omega threes in yeah. there from your salmon. Oh, that's really fun. Yeah, it seems like a good um, sort of representation of your style of homey but very inventive. Yeah. Again, um, it seems like that's about all the time we have for today. Okay. But thank you so much for joining us, Maya, and I hope everyone checks out this cookbook. Uh, whether or not you're infatuated with Alaskan seafood or Alaskan wilderness, um, it's just a wonderful, helpful, handy book of recipes. So thank you so much, Maya. Well, thank you, Kathy. And thanks, everyone at Heritage. We'll see you next week on Eat Your Words. Oh, I like the way you do. Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. For our freshest content and to hear about exclusive events, subscribe to our newsletter. Enter your email at the bottom of our website, heritageradionetwork.org. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at heritage underscore radio. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization driving conversations to make the world a better, fairer, more delicious place. And we couldn't do it without support from listeners like you. Want to be a part of the food world's most innovative community? Rate the shows you like, tell your friends, and please join our community by becoming a member. Just click on the beating heart at the top right of our homepage. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 